Dr. Seuss's Sleep Book Narrated by me The news just came in from the county of Keck that a very small bug by the name of Van Vleck is yawning so wide you can look down his neck. This may not seem very important, I know, but it is, so I'm bothering telling you so. A yawn is quite catching, you see, like a cough. It just takes one yawn to start other yawns off. Now the news has come in that some friends of Van Vleck's are yawning so wide you can look down their necks. At this moment right now, under seven more noses, great yawns are in blossom, they're blooming like roses. The yawn of that one little bug is still spreading. According to latest reports, it is heading across the wide fields, through the sleepy night air, across the whole country, toward every which where. And people are gradually starting to say, I feel rather drowsy. I've had quite a day. Creatures are starting to think about rest. Two Bifferbaum birds are now building their nest. They do it each night, and quite often I wonder how they do this big job without making a blunder. But that is their problem, not yours and not mine. The point is, they're going to bed, and that's fine. Sleep thoughts are spreading throughout the whole land. The time for night brushing of teeth is at hand. Up at Herkheimer Falls, where the great river rushes and crashes down crags in great gargling gushes, the Herkheimer sisters are using their brushes. Those falls are just grand for tooth brushing beneath if you happen to be up that way with your teeth. The news just came in from the castle of Krupp that the lights are all out and the drawbridge is up. And the old drawbridge drawer just said with a yawn, My drawbridge is drawn and it's going to stay drawn till the milkman delivers the milk about dawn. I'm going to bed now so nobody better come round with a special delivery letter. The number of sleepers is steadily growing. Bed is where more and more people are going. In Culpeper Springs, in the Stiltwalker's Hall, the Stiltwalker's stilts are all stacked on the wall. The Stiltwalker walkers have called it a day. They're all tuckered out and they're snoozing away. This is very big news. It's important to know. And that's why I'm bothering telling you so. Way out in the west in the town of Merced, the Hinklehorn Honking Club just went to bed. Every horn has been quietly hung on a hook for the night in its own private Hinklehorn nook. All this long, happy day they've been honking about, and the Hinklehorn honkers have honked themselves out. But they'll wake up quite fresh in the morning, and then they'll start right in, Hinklehorn honking again. Everywhere creatures are falling asleep. The collapsible frink just collapsed in a heap. And by adding the frink to the others before, I am able to give you the who's asleep score. Right now, 40,404 creatures are happily, deeply in slumber. I think you'll agree that's a whopping fine number. Counting up sleepers? Just how do we do it? Really quite simple, there's nothing much to it. We find out how many, we learn the amount, by an audio telly otalio count. On a mountain halfway between Reno and Rome, we have a machine in a plexiglass dome, which listens and looks into everyone's home, and whenever it sees a new sleeper go flop, it jiggles and lets a new biggle ball drop. Our chap counts these balls as they plop in a cup, and that's how we know who is down and who's up. 
Do you talk in your sleep? It's a wonderful sport, and I have some news of this sport to report. The world champion sleep talkers Joe and Mo Redzoff have just gone to sleep and they're talking their heads off. For 55 years now, each chattering brother has babbled and gabbled all night to the other. They've talked about laws and they've talked about gauze. They've talked about paws and they've talked about flaws. They've talked quite a lot about old Santa Claus. And the reason I'm telling you this is because you should take up this sport. It's just fine for the jaws. Do you walk in your sleep? I just had a report of some interesting news of this popular sport. Near Finnegan Fen, there's a sleepwalking group, which not only walks, but it walks all a hoop. Every night they go miles. Why they walk to such length? They have to keep eating to keep up their strength. So every so often one puts down his hoop, stops hooping and does some quick snooping for soup. That's why they are known as the Hoop Soup Snoop Group. Sleepwalking, too, are the curious crandles who sleepwalk on hills with assorted sized candles. The Crandles walk nightly in slumbering peace, in spite of slight burns from the hot dripping grease. The Crandles wear candles because they walk far, and if they wake up, want to see where they are. Now the news has arrived from the Valley of Vale that a Chippendale mop has just bitten his tail which he does every night before shutting his eyes. Such nipping sounds silly, but really it's wise. He has no alarm clock, so this is the way. He makes sure that he'll wake up at the right time of day. His tail is so long he won't feel any pain till the nip makes the trip and gets up to his brain. In exactly eight hours, the Chippendale mop will at last feel the bite and yell, ouch, and wake up. A Mr. and Mrs. J. Carmichael Crocks have just gone to bed near the town of Fort Knox, and they, by the way, have the finest of clocks. I'm not at all sure that I quite, quite understand just how the thing works with that one extra hand, but I do know this clock does one very slick trick. It doesn't tick-tock, how it goes is talk tick. So with its ticks and its talker, and its talks and its ticker, it saves lots of time and the sleepers sleep quicker. What a fine night for sleeping from all that I hear. It's the best night for sleeping in many a year. They're even asleep at the Zweibach Hotel, and people don't usually sleep there too well. The beds are like rocks, and as everyone knows, the sheets are too short, they won't cover your toes. So, if people are actually sleeping in there, it's a great night for sleeping. It must be the air. It's a great night for snores. I just had a report of some boys who are tops in this musical sport. The snortiest snores in all our fair land are Snorter McVale and his Snora Snort Band. This band can snore Dixie and Old Swanee River so loud it would make forty elephants shiver. The loudest of all the boys is McPhail. He snores with his head in a three-gallon pail. So they snore in a cave twenty miles out of town. If they snored closer in, they would snore the town down. Do you know who's asleep out in Funa Laguna? Two very nice Funa Laguna Babuna. We've added them into our Who's Asleep count, which has grown to a really amazing amount. Exactly 8,808 creatures are sleeping now. Isn't that great? A jed is in bed, and the bed of a jed is the softest of beds in the world, it is said. He makes it from pom-poms he grows on his head. 
and he's sleeping right now on the softest of fluff, completely exhausted from growing the stuff. The news has come in from the district of Doft, that too oft are asleep, and they're sleeping aloft. And how are they able to sleep off the ground? I'll tell you, I weighed one last week and I found that an oft is so light he weighs minus one pound. A moose is asleep, he is dreaming of moose drinks. A goose is asleep, he is dreaming of goose drinks. That's well and good when a moose dreams of moose juice, and nothing goes wrong when a goose dreams of goose juice. But it isn't too good when a moose and a goose start dreaming they're drinking the other one's juice. Moose juice, not goose juice, is juice for a moose, and goose juice, not moose juice, is juice for a goose. So when a goose gets a mouthful of juices of mooses, and moose gets a mouthful of juices of gooses, they always fall out of their bed screaming screams. So, I'm warning you now, don't drink in your dreams. Speaking of dreaming, I think you should note that the Bumble Tub Club is now dreaming afloat. Every night they go dreaming down Bumble Tub Creek, except for one night every third or fourth week, when they stop for repairs because their Bumble Tubs leak. But tonight they're afloat full of dreams full of bliss. And that's why I'm bothering telling you this. At the fork of a road in the Vale of Avode, five foot-weary salesmen have laid down their load. All day they've raced round in the heat at top speeds, unsuccessfully trying to sell zizzers of seeds, which nobody wants because nobody needs. Tomorrow will come, they'll go back to their chore. They'll start on the road, zizzer zoofing once more. But tonight they've forgotten their feet are so sore. And that's what the wonderful night time is for. Everywhere creatures have shut off their voices. They've all gone to bed in the beds of their choices. They're sleeping in bushes, they're sleeping in crannies, some on their stomachs and some on their fannies. They're peacefully sleeping in comfortable holes, some even on soft tufted barbershop poles. The number of sleepers is now past the millions. The number of sleepers is now in the billions. They're sleeping on steps and on strings and on floors, in mailboxes, ships, and the keyholes of doors. Every worm on a fish hook is safe for the night. Every fish in the sea is too sleepy to bite. Every whale in the ocean has turned off his spout. Every light between here and Farfoodle is out. And now, adding things up, we are way beyond billions. Our who's asleep score is now up in the zillions. 99 zillion, 9 trillion and 2 creatures are sleeping. So how about you? When you put out your light, then the number will be 99 zillion, 9 trillion and 3. Good night.